Some are going to be drifting in here, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We uh, are going to head the same direction we was last week. Uh, turn into Acts chapter two. We're going to read four verses of scripture there as we study now. I realize that many of you have been in, in the faith for quite a long time and some of the things that I'm saying you're very familiar already with. But there are people at different stages and uh, that's why we need to uh, not only hear it again for the sake of our remembering what the scriptures teach uh, but also to help uh, new ones come in to understand. Amen? Amen? Praise God. I do want to say thank you to everybody that was able to make it out uh, yesterday and to work around uh, the church facilities here. And we got quite a bit done. Uh, a lot was accomplished. Cleaning up. And they're trying to clean up this back part so that the children, the little kids, can be in a safe place. And, and we uh, had some uh, things that were donated to the church. Uh, playground equipment type of stuff and we hope to get that all back there where they will have a safe and clean place where they can play and, and uh, enjoy one another's company. Amen? <clears throat> Praise God. I'm going to save these prayer requests that's up here for whenever John gets up here our service. But right now we're going to uh, study the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. So if you'll turn with me into Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 is where we're going to start. And I covered part of this last week, but I just I will briefly touch on some of it. But it says in Acts 2, verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them us. So let's pray. Lord, this morning as we're here gathered in your name, I pray that you would anoint this service with the Holy Ghost. Nothing can be done except you're involved in it. And we ask your grace. We ask your help. Let something be said that's going to help the hearers walk with you and have a better understanding. Oh God, I ask for grace to minister your word this morning and I pray not only for those that are here, but in every place where men are calling upon your name and the truth, would you anoint the ministry? Oh God, whether it's to adults or children, in every place that lives will be drawn to you, that hearts will be fed and nourished and, and uh, live for you, Lord. And now we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody say in Jesus' name. That's where my faith is at. Is that where yours is? Amen. I want to always do whatever I do in word or deed, as Paul said. Let it be done in the name of Jesus, right? Because that's where our hope lies. Without that shed blood of Jesus, that sacrifice, we would all be in trouble. But because of him, 
we have hope today. And we can pray in that name and because of what he did for us, all things are possible. Amen? Amen. It can look impossible, but things can become possible that are impossible with men because we pray in the name of Jesus. So many things, uh, again, I don't want to go over everything uh, that I covered last Sunday, uh, but Pentecost was a Jewish feast day, and Jews were there at this Jewish uh, feast day from all over the world, okay? They came from places that spoke languages from those places. They were coming to Jerusalem to worship at this feast. And the Lord chose this day uh, to pour out the Holy Ghost for the first time uh, on that Jewish feast day. God had ar already orchestrated all these feast days that the Jews were to observe throughout the year. And Pentecost, the word Pentecost means 50th. In fact, there's some islands uh, I can't remember exactly where they're at, but they're out. They're called Pentecost Island uh, because there's a bunch of islands. I mean, but it, it represents. It means 50, 50. Okay, uh, and Pentecost, the feast of Pentecost, was 50 days after the Passover. Okay, that's why it was called Pentecost too. Uh, it was 50 days after the Passover. So Jesus was crucified on Passover. And 50 days later, after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, would be that Pentecost. And Pentecost was uh, the feast that was the first fruits unto God. And that's exactly what happened. The Holy Ghost was poured out that day. And the first gathering of the fruit of the gospel, the people uh, were gathered in. People were filled with the Holy Ghost, okay, for the first time there. Praise God. This experience that we read about, uh, where they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, this was what Jesus had promised would come. He used the term comforter. He called it the comforter was going to come. It also was called the spirit of truth. Okay? It also, Jesus referenced it as living water. And Jesus, in, in John 7, 37 through 39, it says that last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, his inner man, rather, shall flow rivers of living water. And then it says, This spake he, what he was talking about, the living water, was the spirit which they that believe on him should receive. People that believe on Jesus should receive this experience. Okay? Then it, then it says, for the Holy Ghost, which is the living water, the, that spirit, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given at the time Jesus walked the earth because Jesus was not yet glorified. This experience didn't come till after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And uh, praise God. So the Lord wants everybody to experience uh, this ex ex experience. You know, he wants everybody to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Jesus came on the scene, uh, or rather John the Baptist came on the scene, and he prophesied that Jesus would baptize people with the Holy Ghost when he came. John said, I baptize with water, but the one that comes after me is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And that's what happened. Okay? It couldn't happen until after Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, his glory being glorified. 
Praise God. And if you look in Acts 2.33, we read this uh, last week. As the people began to speak in other tongues, and I also told you last week, chapter 1 tells you there was about 120 people there, not just the 12 apostles. Okay? But they began to speak in other languages, other tongues, as the Holy Ghost came into them. And the people were there at that Jewish feast day from all over the world. They were Jews. There were some proselytes with people that had, had uh, embraced the Jewish religion, the Jewish, Jewish faith. They were there too. But they were there from all places in the earth coming to that Jewish feast day. And they began to see this that was happening to these about 120 and they gathered around and was listening and they were hearing them the Bible says that they were they heard them speak in their own language wherein they were born so they were hearing them and they said are not all these which speak Galileans there, there are people from Galilee. There's just about 120. They're all Galilean. And how are we hearing them speaking? They're, they're speaking the wonderful works of God uh, in the language that we came from. And they can't know all of that, you know. This, this was something supernatural taking place. Uh, that, and so Peter uh, stood up. There were some people. And we're saying these, these are drunk, you know. And Peter stood up and said, uh, these are not drunk as you suppose. It's just the third hour of the day. He said, but this is that. And that's what I uh, labeled this talk, or this teaching today. This is that, you know. But he took an Old Testament scripture, Joel 2.28, and he explained to those that were listening there before him, this is, these people are not drunk as you suppose. But this, what you're seeing and hearing, if you look at verse number 33 of Acts 2, therefore being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which you now see and you hear. In other words, this what you're seeing and hearing is the Holy Ghost. This, where they were filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking these other languages, this is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He's preaching to the crowd before him. Okay? And uh, he was saying that this was uh, fulfilling what Joel, the Old Testament prophet Joel, in the writings of Joel, he said that this was going to happen in the last days. And we'll cover some of that a little later about it being the last days that we're living in. But he said this is that. This tongue-talking uh, experience, this baptism of God's Spirit evidenced by speaking in other tongues, this is what Joel said was going to happen in the last days. And I will just say this uh, without getting too deep into it, that the last days started back on the day of Pentecost. We're living in the last days, okay? Praise God. To, when Jesus came, it actually began just a little prior, through Jesus coming in the New Covenant, the New Testament. But this is what God is doing in the last days. The last days will end, the last days will end at the second coming of Jesus. And that's where we're living at. We're living on the threshold of that taking place. And everybody, everybody needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Everybody needs the Holy Ghost because that's the time we're living in. God has given us uh, He's reconciling men unto himself by the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. 
And God is that Holy Spirit. That's who he is. That spirit that comes in the baptism of the Holy Ghost is reconciliation to God. That's what it actually is. That's mankind. The sin problem has been dealt with through the sacrifice of Jesus. And people that will hear the gospel and will repent of living a sinful life and be converted to Jesus, to the faith of Jesus, and give their lives to him, through that sacrifice, God will forgive and God will restore his relationship with man, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. That's what God is doing in this time. This age, this time period, is going to close out sharply. It's going to be over. This, 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 is, this is only a time that God is doing this, and it won't last forever. It's going to close out with Armageddon taking place. The rapture is going to take place, and Armageddon is going to, going to happen to those that have refused the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Praise God. There's a lot of things that are going on in our world. Uh, a lot of uh, bad things going on. And you may wonder, why is all this bad stuff happening? Because the Bible says that these things are going to happen. You see, evil is going to come to a climax with the Antichrist coming on the scene. It's going to come to a climax. Okay? We've been having these 2,000 years in that neighborhood of people being able to come to Jesus and be reconciled to God. Be saved. Amen. But men are refusing the gospel. They're, they're not wanting God in the schools. They're not wanting God in the government. They're, they're doing all kinds of things. What's happening is is that evil is is uh, is you know growing and growing and growing in society to the point where what's fixing to happen is there's going to be a one world government and there's going to be a one world religion, but it ain't going to be the real one. And there's going to be a man of sin that's going to come, uh, whom the devil is going to possess. And he's going to be a one world leader. And he's going to hate God. He's going to defy everything about the gospel. And it's going to be a time of great tribulation and trouble. Amen. But that, what is that going to do? Is that's going to be the climax of evil existing. And it's going to bring Jesus back. Amen. And he's going to judge those that have chosen evil instead of his gospel. Amen? But right before he judges this world, he's going to get his people out of here. Just like he did in the flood. Noah went into the ark. And then the flood came and destroyed them all. You know? There's going to be people living for Jesus at, the, at his second coming. But there's going to be the masses are going to be following the Antichrist. And all of that, that type of stuff. And judgment is going to come because men, uh, they rejected truth and loved unrighteousness, embraced unrighteousness. That's what all this woke stuff that's going on, all this kind of stuff like this, all this, everything that defies the order that God has set forth, that's part of the Antichrist spirit. Okay? And that's why it's, it's, it's really rampant right now. And you know what? It's not going to get better until Jesus comes. I'm just telling you, you better hang on to Jesus. Get close to him and hang on. Get full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Because you've got to be full of this experience that I'm telling you about if you're going to make it out of here. And anybody can because Jesus paid for it that we can have the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. we just got to give ourselves to the Lord. Don't get wrapped up in the stuff that's going on in this world. Don't be a part of that. You know, do do what you can to, to help people find the Lord because everybody's got to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't live after the flesh. 
but live after the Spirit of the Lord. Amen? Praise God. Jesus is coming back. Just like he got Noah in the ark and rose above the flood, and just like he got Lot out of Sodom before he destroyed Sodom, he's going to get his people at it before he destroys. He is. Praise God. The Bible says the Christians are not appointed to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Praise God. So we just, we, we need to really pay attention to our walk with God. We need to really stay full of the Holy Ghost and help our families to stay full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. The Holy Ghost is God inside of you. That's what it is. Amen. And that was only made available to us by Jesus dying on the cross. Amen. So we need to live for him with everything that we got. The time is very, very short. It ain't, we haven't got a lot longer to go, but it is so, so very important that we stay full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm telling you, you need to pray through every day. You need to pray through. And, uh, you need to pray and have a relationship with God. God is that Holy Spirit. Okay? And only, I, I can't do that for you. I have to do it for me. And I want to do it. I like being in the presence of the Lord. I like being close to the Lord. Don't you? Amen. Amen. But you personally, you, you are responsible personally for your relationship with God. Amen. My mom's not responsible for me, you know, and neither am I for her. Amen. Praise God. As a, as a pastor, I'm responsible for sounding the trumpet and to, for warning people. That's what I'm trying to do right now, you know. Praise God. But the Lord's going to take his people out of here before he's going to protect them from his wrath. That does not mean we will escape all trouble because there's a difference in the wrath of God and the wrath of the Antichrist. You hear? There's a difference in that. We are not appointed unto God's wrath. God's not going to punish us when we're living for Him. He's not going to judge us and destroy us. But the world is aching for a breaking. It is. And we need to do what we can to try to help people get escaped to get people to Jesus, amen, so that they can be saved from all of what is going to come upon the world because it's going to be very, 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 uh, very a, a time like never has been, you know. Praise God when the Lord purges it. The flood was one time and it destroyed everything that went in the ark, you know, and uh, everything that was in the ark was saved. But everything outside of it was destroyed and suffered. Amen. And uh, I'm sure that that the uh, the world had probably lots of little children in it. That's kind of a difficult thing to think about. But everything that was not in the ark perished. So did God destroy the little children? Well. God holds parents responsible for getting their children in the faith. Amen. What happened was, is the t God's tools didn't work. God's tools didn't do their part. And they refused to take their children into the ark. I'm not saying the children were lost forever, but sometimes people suffer for what other people don't do. They really do. Ask, I mean, look at the, the whole creation that is suffering because of what Adam and Eve did. Amen? So, we need to do what we can to get our families in Jesus and living for Jesus. Amen? Praise God. We, uh, we, we, are, we just got just a little bit more, I believe, that we're going to, uh, ahead of us, until Jesus comes. Amen. We need to be ready. And, I, and Jesus gave a parable. <clears throat> this, this is why I'm preaching and teaching about the Holy Ghost. Is because 
you know, Jesus gave a parable in, in Matthew 25, you know, of ten virgins, five being wise, five being foolish, right? They were all virgins, and I think that that depicts, we're not talking about people that's not in the faith. We're talking about people that are in the faith of Jesus, amen? And they have at one time experienced what it means to be a Christian, and that is the born-again experience, amen? And the, the Lord, through his shed blood, brings us back into a virgin state, spiritually speaking, where we are, uh, uh, to be in a virgin state means to be uh, uncontaminated or anything, you know, we're pure, that's what the Bible teaches us, that, uh, that the blood of Jesus does for us, it, it changes us uh, from being sinners to saints, we can't achieve that on our own, it takes the blood of Jesus to do that, amen. But once we have been brought to that virgin state, and again, that we're brought to that place through the sacrifice of Jesus and the born again experience, the baptism in Jesus' name, and, the, and we receive the Holy Ghost. The, when you receive the Holy Ghost, uh, you have been put into the kingdom of God. You have entered the kingdom of God. It's a spiritual kingdom. When you came to this building, you didn't get into the kingdom of God. Just being in, in a building that's got a steeple. We don't have a steeple. I don't want one. But, but, but many people are going to buildings and, you know, they're gathering with people and they got a steeple and they think, well, I'm in the church. That doesn't put you in the church. Amen. We are born into the kingdom of God, the church, by one spirit, and that's a capital S, talking about that Holy Ghost baptism. By one spirit, we're all baptized into one body, referencing the body being the church. Okay? That's what the, the body of Christ is, the church. It's not the building. It's the people, the faith of Jesus Christ and his people. And so you get in the church by the birth, by the birth process, uh, water spirit, being baptized in the water spirit. Amen. But... Once that you have that, you need to learn to, to live in the Spirit. Amen. And stop living after the flesh. Amen. Praise God. And then it's a growth process. But you need to be full of the Holy Ghost. The virgins, the ten virgins, five wise, five foolish, I see it depicting that there's going to be people that are, that are in the faith, but yet they have not kept up with paying attention to what's really important in their life, and that is that relationship of the Holy Ghost in their lives. Amen. Praise God. You need to focus on, on staying close to God every day. Amen. Have a relationship with Him. Praise God. If you want a good relationship at home, be good to one another and, you know, Communicate, right? Isn't that right? You know? If you don't communicate with one another, your relationship's going to go sour. Amen? Praise God. You're going to look for somebody else to communicate with. Right? And that's going to destroy your home life. Well, what you need to do with God is you need to communicate with Him and grow closer to Him and, and, and stay close to Him and stay full of that experience. Amen. It's kind of like, you know, filling your car up with gas. Don't let your car run out of gas. Amen. You're going to have to call a tow truck, and it's going to cost you major problems. Amen. So we need to, like that, we need to stay full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Full of the Spirit of the Lord. Concentrate your efforts on staying full because listen to me, the trumpet's going to sound and like those ten virgins, there's going to be some people that have let their experience die down. It sounds to me like, you know, but there's going to be some that have stayed close to the Lord and kept that experience alive in their life. Amen. They got a relationship with the Lord. They've got that through praying and, and reading their the word of the Lord, staying close, they're persevering in the Lord, they're, 
they're, they're talking to him and they spend time worshiping him and praising him. You know, they just love the Lord. Amen. They had to let other things come in and, and cause distractions in their life. They, you know, they considered God the most important priority of their lives. And they stayed close to him. And in doing so, they stayed full of the Holy Ghost. You know what's going to happen? They're going to be caught out of here. The king is going to come. The, the, the bridegroom is going to come. And that, Matthew 25, where those ten virgins are, the bridegroom is going to come, and they had to be ready when the bridegroom came. Because the bridegroom came, and the cry was made, go out to meet him. And those that were ready, they went out to meet him. And later, the other ones, when they tried to get oil in their vessels, they let their oil run out. They tried to get oil in their vessels, and that oil represented the Holy Ghost. Okay? That's what it was a symbol of, the Holy Ghost. Amen. When we get people and we anoint them with oil, you know, if they're sick or anything like that, we take the oil. <clears throat> Praise God. The oil itself doesn't heal people. But the oil is a symbol. We do it because the Word of God teaches us to do it. If people, the Bible says that any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over them, anointing them with oil. Why do we do that? Because this is a symbol of we're wanting God that we've deserved it or anything, but because we're putting the name of the sacrifice there. And you know what? When the name is there, the Lord will minister there. Because, not because of us, but because of the sacrifice. And just like the oil is put on people, we're, we were asking God to put the Spirit on people. So the oil is a symbol. It's a symbol, likeness, of representing the Holy Ghost. That oil that the virgins had, it was important for them that they not only at one time had oil in their, in their lamps, but they needed to have oil when the bridegroom actually came. It needed to be, they needed to be filled with the oil of the whole of the uh, inner vessels, which represented the Holy Ghost. We need to be full of that experience with God whenever He comes again, and when His the cry is made, go out to meet Him. We'll be ready. He's the bridegroom. We're the bride, and we'll be ready. Amen. Whenever He comes, but those that didn't have the oil, they went to try to find some oil, to buy some oil, and come and try to get in. But you know what happened when they came and tried to get in? The door was shut. And they could not get in after the door was shut. It's kind of like Noah and those folks in the ark, right? They, anybody could have walked in that ark. Anybody could have walked inside of that ark you know, and, and get into the place of safety, you know, but the, the Bible tells us that Noah was a preacher of righteous, and he preached the floods coming. They had to have faith ahead of time. If they didn't have faith, the reason why they weren't in the ark is they didn't believe. And that's the reason why people don't get where they need to be with God. They really don't have the faith to move them to really prepare and get ready. I believe some people for a while got kind of frightened at Noah's message. There's coming a flood. You know, I think they got, I think that's just my opinion. I, I believe people got stirred because Peter said uh, that that the, uh, Noah was, was anointed, the Spirit anointed him in the days of Noah. You know, we're in a few that was eight souls were saved by water, right? It says that, that the Spirit went to, and preached to those that were in prison. It doesn't mean, I don't believe, that, that the Spirit went after they had already went to hell and preached them. But it, it talks about, he used Noah to preach to the people that ended up being in prison, in, you know, spiritual prison, and because of that flood. But anyway, they, they probably got stirred for a while and started trying to help Noah build. You see a lot of people like that. They get stirred for a moment momentarily, and then next thing you know, when they don't see the flood of waters, you know, they're out the door again. Or when temptation comes, they're out the door again. You know, but uh, Noah 
kept preaching, was faithful, and finally the Lord told him, go in, it's time. And only eight people went in. Only eight people went into the ark. Noah and his family. Praise God. He must have been somebody that his family knows reliable to listen to, wasn't he? And so they they went into the ark, and Noah didn't shut that door. God shut that door. And when God shut the door, Noah couldn't open that door. There was probably people, when that water started falling, and those the fountains of the deep broke up underneath them, and the water started coming up, and the water started coming down, whoever they looked, there was water. And then they believed, then they believed they were probably beating on the ark. You know, before they were mocking him, they got to the place where they were mocking him. But when this these things started taking place, they they realized we done messed up. Let's get let's get Noah to open that ark. Let us get in there. We believe you. We believe we're convinced now. But it was too late to be convinced. Then. Just like those virgins, it was too late to be convinced. Once the bridegroom came, the doors were shut, and. They were cons those other virgins were considered people that worked iniquity. Why was they considered that before they were considered virgins? It's because unbelief is an expression of inequity. Unbelief. Not moving and preparing is sin. It is. Unbelief is a very big sin in the eyes of the Lord. It's, it's what causes people to not live for him. Amen? We need to let the word of God stir us and move us. We need to believe it to the point where, you know what, I'm not just going to hear what's being preached. I'm going to move and I'm going to do something about my walk with the Lord. I'm going to actually put it into practice and, and get close to the Lord and live for him and I believe Jesus. How many believe Jesus is coming? Do you honestly believe that? Amen. Praise God. I do too. I really do. That's why I, that's why I do the things that I do here. I believe this is fixing to be over. It's going to be wrapping up. I believe one of these days that I'm going to see the Lord. Amen. I believe one of these days that this is all going to take place. And I want to, more than anything, be ready. I can preach to you and I'll be ready. Did you know that? The Bible tells me that. Paul said, I got to keep under my body that it, while I preach to others, I myself could be a castaway. So, what I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to me too. Amen. I want to be ready. I want you to be ready. I want people to be ready. I want people that's listening by way of this technology. I want them to be ready. Amen. Praise God. I want souls to be ready because. To be ready, we must be filled full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? And you can't be full of the world and still be full of the Holy Ghost. You can't do that. Amen? They just don't go together. Something's going to be your Lord. Something's going to be your God. Amen? And I want the Lord to be my God. Don't you? Amen. Praise God. We are living in the time when the Holy Holy Ghost is being poured out. God has done something for all of mankind through the Jews rejecting him when he came the first time. He has opened up salvation for all peoples. Amen. Anybody can have what I'm telling you about this morning. Anybody. It's not for a select few people. It is for anybody, anybody that will believe the gospel and hear the call to repent and make an about face. Everybody that will hear and get, take the Savior's name and be baptized in his name for the remission of sin. Everybody and anybody can have their sins remitted. Amen. And everybody can have this experience with the Lord. It's for you. Peter said on the day of it's for you, it's for your children, it's to, to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now, if you study this out in Acts chapter 
2 verse 37 uh, after preaching to these people Peter had them ask him what shall we do they wanted to they felt pricked in their hearts what does that mean they were pricked in their hearts in other words they felt like I need to get right with God I, what, what, what should I do to get right with God they were pricked in your heart. You know what that is? That's God calling you. That is God calling you. He uses preaching to call you. Amen. Praise God. And, and that's when Peter told them what to do, what the Lord wants them to do. And the message is still the same today. If you want to get where you need to be with God, if you want to have rightness with God, you've got to, I said it already, but you've got to repent you got to be baptized in the name of the one that died for you, Jesus. Amen. And the Bible says if you do that, you can be reconciled to God, which is being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And it's to everybody. Tell your children about it. Help them get in the ark. Right? Teach them about it. Teach them to love God. Teach them to seek God. Amen. Praise God. I'm telling you to, to pray for the Holy Ghost. I'm not telling you to pray to speak in tongues. I'm telling you that pray for the Holy Ghost, and when that comes, you will speak in tongues. There's a lot of people trying to seek tongues. Amen. That's like trying to get a pair of tongues instead of a shoe. Amen. If you, get, if you go buy a pair of tines off and you just get tines, how are you going to wear that? It ain't going to do you no good. You go around with a, with a shoe tine on top of your foot, tap, tape it on there or something? No. You go and you get a pair of shoes. And when you get the shoes, the tongue comes with it. Right? It's just going to be there. It's part of it. Amen. The tongue part is the expression that you have experienced this this baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. James said the tongue is the most unruly member of your body. You know? Uh, it says all kinds of creatures have been tamed. But the tongue can no man tame. That's what James said. And I believe that that's the reason why God chose this expression to express Amen. The Bible says the Spirit, capital S, bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. What does that mean? It means he that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. In other words, when God comes into you and marries up to your spirit, you know what marriage is is when two become one. And that's by that end intimate relationship, right? When two become one. Well, when God marries up to your spirit, God is that Holy Spirit, and you have a spirit, and when he actually becomes the Lord of the interior of you, when you are actually married up to him, amen, it is an intimate uh, thing that happens, a spiritual intimate thing that happens between you and and your Lord. It's a heart thing that takes place. Amen. People say all kinds of things on the outside. But what God looks at is the heart on the inside. And when he marries up to your spirit, the Bible says the spirit bears witness. What do witnesses do? They say things, don't they? The spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. That's why the tongues come. It's bearing witness. That this is a son or a daughter of the Lord. Amen. He's in there. He's married to that person. He's married up to their spirit. Amen. Praise God. This person has an intimate relationship with the Lord. Amen. Praise God. What God lost in the garden when he would come and he would visit Adam and Eve through the shed blood of Jesus that has been restored. I mean, it doesn't come any other way. It doesn't come because you've been a good neighbor, though you be, need to be a good neighbor. You know? It, it doesn't come because you never said a cuss word in your life. That won't bring this experience to you. 
It took a sacrifice. It took Jesus taking care of the sin problem that separated us from God. Amen? It took Jesus come and tasting the punishment of our wrongdoings. Actually, he took the punishment that belonged to me. It belonged to me. He went to hell for me because I was going there. He did it all. He went through all of it. And, and do, he, do, he did all of that, and yet, and then he lets me be restored unto God, the Spirit of God, married up to the Lord. Because what was once dirty and filthy has now, by the blood of Jesus, been made clean. A place where God will dwell and live. Amen? And I'm not talking that just for me. I'm just talking that it's for every one of us. Any one of us. What God would not live in before through the shed blood of Jesus and the sacrifice of Jesus, the sin problem, the guilt, the shame has been all removed and taken care of by the blood of Jesus. Jesus has taken every bit of the punishment that belonged to us laid it upon him, and extended his righteousness, his robe of righteousness, upon every one of us. People will look at you and know what kind of a person you was in the past, and they, they'll say all kinds of things. They won't forgive you. But I'm here to tell you, whenever you get right with God, you get that baptism in Jesus' name and get filled with the Holy Ghost, God doesn't look at you at the person you used to be. He sees Jesus. That's what he sees. He, and Jesus was totally 100% sinless. Amen? And that's what he sees you. He doesn't see sinfulness. He sees innocence. That's what he sees. But it's nothing that you have done but respond to the gospel of Jesus and believe. And he will live there because that person has the blood upon him. Amen? They are no longer sinners. They are righteous people in the eyes of God. Don't violate that. The Bible says that the, the Holy Ghost <clears throat> is our seal unto the day of redemption. It, it is our seal. It's like a seal. If y'all ever garden or anything and you put away, you preserve food, say mason jars, you know, you hot bath them and all that kind of stuff. And you got to make sure that when you go to hot bath in those vegetables and stuff, you got to make sure you got to clean that lid really good. And you got to make sure there's no contaminants there. <clears throat> and then you put that seal on there and you hot bath them. They go through a certain amount of pressure. And then you set them off. And as they begin to cool down, you hear a ping, ping. I read them this way. Have you done it before? Yeah. And then that's when that ping goes off, you know that no outside can get inside because it's sealed. It's sealed. And when you was born again, you gotta, you gotta understand, you gotta make sure those lids are clean because if it's not sealed, it will spoil. And the Bible tells us that we are sealed unto the day of redemption by the Holy Ghost. That Holy Spirit experience, we are sealed. That experience would never come had Jesus not died. So we got the blood applied to us, and that seal is placed upon us. And that seal is upon us, and you don't want that seal to ever be broken. Because as long as that seal is on your life, it stays on your life, you're preserved. You're preserved. So worldliness will break that seal. Ungodliness will break that seal. And what is on the interior will spoil if the seal is not protected. You've got to protect that seal. And the Holy Ghost is that seal. Amen? And the, re the day of redemption is talking about the day when Jesus comes back, the redemption of our bodies is what it's talking about. Even people that died in the faith, when Jesus comes the second time, when he comes again, the people that died with that seal on their life, they died. Listen to me. They are sealed into the day of redemption. The day of redemption is whenever Jesus comes in and this mortal puts on immortality. I don't care if he turns back to dust. We're going to have a body like Jesus' glorified body. 
And that's, that, that experience is a seal. You've got to have that seal on your life. If that seal is not on your life, you're carnal. You understand? I'm not trying to blast nobody. I'm just telling you the fact. That is the only thing that will seal an individual. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, you must, if you're going to enter the kingdom of God, you must be born again of the water, that's baptism in Jesus' name, and of the Spirit, that's a baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen? That's what you've got to have to be sealed into the day of redemption. And if you have that seal when you're walking the earth when Jesus comes, listen to me. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, you're going to be changed from a mortal to an incorruptible body. That's what you're going to be changed into. And you're going to be, along with those that died in the faith, I don't care if they turn back to dust and ashes. Listen to me. They're coming out of there with a glorified body. And they're going to be caught up just prior to the judgment coming. It kind of simultaneously sounds to me like. It's going to be something that takes place simultaneously at when Armory, you heard about Armageddon and stuff like that, where God's going to let all nations come against Israel. He's going to gather them together to burn them. That's what he's going to do. He's going to judge them. But he's going to catch his people out, and they won't be a part of that. But they've got to have that seal. That's why we preach about the Holy Ghost all the time. People will tell you the Holy Ghost, you don't have to have it. It's a, it's a second blessing. That's not the truth, folks. People that tell you that don't know it themselves, or they're, they're deceiving people deliberately. Amen. Jesus said you've got to have it. You must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. And that's the Holy Ghost and baptism in Jesus' name. It's called a new birth. We call it new birth. Praise God. And, not, and again, you've got to protect that seal upon your lives. Praise God. Keep that seal on your life. That's the Holy Ghost. The five wise virgins kept that seal. The foolish ones let the oil run out. They didn't keep the seal. And they were considered workers of inequity because of it. And there was going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth because of it. They had at one time been made virgins. But they let that seal be damaged some way or another. Probably procrastination. You know what procrastination is? You know, I'll pray later. I'll get right with God later. I'll get close to God later. I'll get that Holy Ghost later. You may not have time later. Amen. There were a lot of people probably told Noah, I help you a little. I got something else to do right now. I will help you build the ark later. I help. I help. I'll get in there later, though. Just give me a little advance notice. <laughs> and I, as soon as you let me know this is fixing to happen, I'll jump in there. Noah didn't know himself. Noah didn't know himself. The Lord shut the door. It's going to be all over. It's going to be too late. You, you got. The Bible says. By faith, Noah moved with fear. And that's what you've got to do. He prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Fear can be a positive thing sometimes. You know, we don't live in fear that torments us because we, we got under the blood of Jesus and we live there. We don't have to be afraid. But if you're not where you need to be with the Lord, you, you need to be afraid. Right? You need to be afraid. Because you're in a very, very dangerous place. And, you know, once the, once the, the door's closed, you, there's nothing to be done about it then. You've got to have faith, like Noah had, in advance. He heard from God, you know. He heard from God, and he moved with it. He he, it shook him. He moved with fear. We've got to get this thing built. The Lord gave me instructions for him. We've got to get this thing built. Listen, if, if we don't build it, we're going to be all swallowed up by it. Right? It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. You know? He had to move with fear. 
Even everybody else started making fun of him and mocking him. And you know what? He he believed it to the point he was able to ignore their sarcasm and their criticisms. And he believed he was so persuaded that he kept working and he got it ready. You know what? Sad thing for the world, but he was right. And you know what? What I'm telling you this morning, I'm going to be right on it. It's not something I said, it's something he said. I'm just telling you what he said. It's going to happen. Whether people believe it or not, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. <clears throat> but we're talking about the Holy Ghost. We're living in the time, in the last days, and the last days are going to be closing out very shortly. Amen. The last days, God's pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh, not just Jews anymore, all peoples, all nationalities, whoever will, they can come and drink of the water of life freely. It's, it's available for everyone. It's for you, it's for your children, it's for as, as many as are far off, it's for the good, it's for the bad, it's for everybody. There's a parable Jesus gave to his servants. This king had a wedding for his son. He said, go out in the highways and byways. He went and invited people and people made excuses. So he got he was pretty upset with them. And so he said, well, you go out and you go out into the byway and get the good, get the cripple, get the man, get the lame, get anybody and everybody you can and bring them to the wedding. And those people that wouldn't come, they had all those excuses, they're going to be destroyed. I said it wrong vernacular. You can look up the parable. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Live for the Lord. Stay full of the Holy Ghost. I didn't get very far on what I was talking about this morning, but my time is up. Praise God. Today's a good day to get full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Get you a drink if you want to. Or change.